Welcome to another lesson in paint abilities. Today we're going to be taking a look at another ocean scene, but we're going to be focusing on the clouds off in the distance. So I'm going to be sharing with you my procedure, my method for creating large dramatic clouds from a distance, hovering over the ocean, maybe dropping a little bit of rain and creating a scene that looks dramatic and yet peaceful. So let's go take a look at the original photograph. Here you have a photograph that I chose from Vecdeasy. This photograph has some large dramatic clouds that are hovering out over the ocean and they're very painterly looking and I'm just drawn to this scene. I would love to try to recreate this in a painting. So come along with me and let's get started. So we're working with on an 11 by 14 wrapped canvas on this project and I am working with plaid folk art multi-surface paints here. These are acrylic two ounce bottles of paint in pre um, in pre-made colors and the colors I'm working with to get on my background for this ocean landscape are wicker white, sky mist, linen, and Prussian blue. That's going to give us our sky with the wicker white and sky mist. The ocean with the Prussian blue just to set that. Um, we're going to add also just a little bit of teal to that. I forgot. Um, and then the linen for the sand. So I'm going to go ahead and put these out on my palette and we're going to be working with a Donna Dewberry one stroke painter sponge to get those colors applied to our canvas. So I'm going to go ahead and put these colors out. This is the wicker white. A little more than that. There we go. And sky mist, which is going to be our sky background color. Okay. Then we have our watercolors, which is going to be Prussian blue. And a touch of teal. There we go. And then finally our sand color, which is linen. Move this over so I can make that room for that right here. There. Okay. And then I will need floating medium later, but I'm not going to put that out just now. Okay. So when we're working with this, this painter sponge, we don't want to get it wet, soaking wet, you just want to dip your fingers into some clean water and then wipe them on the surface of the sponge. Just enough dampness to help our paint colors move. So then I'm going to pick up the sky mist on the round end of my sponge and we're going to start to apply this in a circular motion across the sky. This is a very pale blue, as you can see, and we're using circles to help this color get into the grooves on the canvas because it's a, it is a pre-coated canvas, but we want to be able to get into the grooves of the fabric. So about two thirds of the way down, following that rule of thirds, right? And I might just get a little touch of white now. And I'm going to turn my canvas this way so that I can lighten up the lower uh, half or so of the sky. All right. It's going to be barely noticeable given the color of the blue, but once we get our um, water on there, you'll start to see and understand that better. Okay. So next, what I want to do is actually put in my sand color because that's going to be underneath the water as it comes forward. Okay. So I'm going to wipe off as much of this color onto a paper towel as I can. And then I'm going to come and get my base color for my sand, which is the linen color. Okay. So now we're going to go ahead and turn this canvas upside down and again, making circles, applying this color to the bottom third of our camera, not even, not quite a third because I want to leave room for our water. Okay. But just up to about here 
And once you work that in, just give it a good go across left to right. And don't forget the edges like we did with our sky. Bottom and sides, okay? Turn this back around. So now you should see we've got our sky color, our sand color, and then right in here is going to be this small strip, which is the ocean horizon coming forward to the shore. So wiping off this again on paper towel, I'm going to come and get my dark color, which is my Prussian blue, and work that onto my sponge. Okay, and we're going to turn this sideways now, and I'm going to find my horizon line and then pull that towards me with the round end of my sponge pressed down on the canvas. So I'm going to come right about just a little lower than halfway, right about here. So press and then pull straight towards you. We'll give you the best result without taping off or anything and give you a nice horizon. Okay. And then you want to go on that edge and this edge. Okay, and that should look fairly straight. Now coming forward, working circles. And I'm using the back end of this sponge, which is still slightly damp from my fingers, um, to help soften this color into the, the sand in the foreground. So I'm not pinching the sponge and I'm not um, raising it up on its tip. Okay, we're just letting the whole face of the sponge go back and forth. Now I'm going to pick up just a little bit of the teal and we're going to work that into the foreground of that water. And then take it back a little bit into the darker blue. And a little bit of white now. And I'm going to work that in on my sponge as I come forward onto the sand. And I'm not making that a straight line. I'm just going to let it kind of sputter and soften wherever it hits on the, on the sand. Okay. All right. So that's a good base for this canvas and the entire canvas is now covered in that paint. So I'm going to go ahead and fold up this sponge, put it in my brush basin. I'll clean that later, but it keeps it wet until I can do that. Okay. So as I mentioned in the beginning, the focal point for this painting is these big billowy clouds up in the sky. So I'm going to focus on those first because there's going to be a couple of different, um, layers of color as we go into these. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do is put out, this is dove gray. So it's a very pale gray. And then we have some white and we have some blue. Okay. So if clouds don't tend to be when, when the sun is not hitting them, they cast their own shadows on themselves and they tend to be a slightly darker shade as you can see in the picture. Okay. Oops. So I'm going to pick up my um, mop. This is a three quarter inch mop and I'm going to um, let's work with a little bit of floating medium. Floating medium is the fluff that's inside paint without any pigment. We use this when we want paint to be thinner um, and we don't want to use water. Okay. So I'm not looking for a watercolor effect with this. I just want to have a thinner paint. So I'm going to go ahead and load my three quarter mop with this floating medium. And then I'm going to come and get this very pale dove gray and work that into the brush with the medium. Okay. Now looking at that picture, and as I mentioned, these are, these look to be like they could be storm clouds or at least rain producing clouds because they're flat on the bottom and they could actually be raining out 
over the ocean where they sit. So I'm going to once more turn this sideways and I'm going to, with the flat, which by pressing down on that mop, I get a flat. I'm going to create a flat bottom going across. Okay. And then there's like a little skip in the middle, maybe a little hump, get a little stronger of that and then keep going across off the canvas like that. So that's that flat bottom of those billowy clouds. And it's not a dark gray, so it's making them look um, t tinted or shadowed, but not foreboding and stormy, okay? So now what I want to do is, continuing with that color, from that line, I'm going to pull up on the flat. So I am actually applying pressure and pulling up with that mop and sweeping away as I do. And it's at a slight angle. Hopefully you can see that. That's a slight angle up and to the left, okay? And then we're gonna have another up here. I need more of that color. There we go. All right. All right, so just kind of creating this um, tinted color, shadowed color for these clouds. And it gets a little lower here and it goes off the edge. So I know we're dealing with some very pale colors here. Now I'm going to take my medium with the dove gray and I'm just going to get a tiny amount of this Prussian blue. It's very strong. And I'm going to work that into my brush with those colors, slightly tinting. There we go. Not too much. And I'm going to kind of pull that and tap it into the lower regions where this might be darker. bit more of that Prussian. You have to be real careful. It's very, very strong and we just want to slightly tint. Okay. So now I'm going to come up here and kind of swirl on that flat and scrub this color in. I'm leaving some of that light gray and I'm adding more tint. I need a little more medium. there, leaving some light and dark areas. Oh, a little bit more of that blue, very little. All right, so we're just trying to kind of tap that in, leave a little bit of movement. I'm going to come up here. Get a little more of this dove gray with that. Okay, just looking at the shapes of these clouds. And with a little more up here. And then maybe just a little bit in the distance back here. Okay. So we're getting the shapes of that, and now we're ready to start adding. Let's put a little more here. I just saw a spot. And that doesn't have to be exactly like the picture, but I like these shapes of these clouds. So there we go. All right, so a little bit of wet in there, but for the most part, you can see without the glare. And let's come in with just a little of that blue. And I want to kind of hit the bottoms of this where it's flat. But I don't want it circular like that, so 
A little medium help that move. There we go. I was seeing a line between my gray and my blue, so I'm bringing that together. Okay, it's really not that dark. All right, that's better. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and clean this brush now. I'm going to let that set up a little bit, and then we will come back in with our smaller mop and do the white highlights, okay? So while that's setting up, I'm going to address my ocean and my sand. So I've got a three-quarter inch flat here. Get that damp. Okay, and we're going to start to add some more interest into this ocean. Now, like I said, it's it's kind of, it's like the secondary point, all right? Um, not, not the main focal like the clouds are. So I'm loading this with some medium, and I'm going to get some, a um, little bit of Prussian blue up here, and some white, and load that brush with that paler blue. It's almost like my sky mist color, but a little bit darker. Okay, so what I want to do now is let's side stroke some of this Prussian blue. And we're going to do a little sputtering. And I want to leave some darks and some lights. So on that chisel edge, but at about a 45 degree angle to my canvas, I'm just going to kind of sputter and I can push occasionally to add some dark because my dark's on the left as I'm pulling from left to right. And I can pull from right to left and then I get sputter with the white. A little more medium. Okay, so just little chisel sputters with light and dark just to give some more interest to that ocean sitting out there. You'll notice that it's not bright white, so it's not coming forward. It's just adding some movement on top of the water. Now I want a little bit of a tint of green in this sea. I'm going to grab, a, this is called turf. And it's got a slight tint of green, a little bit brighter than the teal. Oops, there we go. And what I want to do with that is start to give, you know, because sea water tends to have a green tone to it. So I want to take that with the Prussian and let's mix that. So turf, lots of turf. And a little bit of Prussian, a little bit of medium. Okay. So we're going to go across here and we're starting to get a little bit of that green sea color. And you're not completely um, removing the undercoating, under color I should say. Um, you're again mostly on the chisel, creating a little bit of movement. Don't forget your edges. You can come back into, let's get that turf. Come back into your deeper water out here and add a little bit of it, but leave the dark towards the back. Okay, so it's just starting to show the signs of shallowing about halfway back. All right, and you can get a little bit of white with that now. Blend that together, chisel edge, and little sputters on that 45 degree angle on the chisel edge, okay? Just starting to come forward. You can have a 
have a little bit back here, but it's going to be mostly up on the shore. Now, if you remember from last lesson, and if you don't, if you haven't watched that basic landscape, ocean landscape from last week, go back and watch that. But um, I'll tell you again here also that when you're standing straight on to the water, there isn't a curve when the wave comes in. You're seeing just the line like a horizon. Okay, so I'm going to wipe my brush off and just get medium worked into that brush so that it's showing the color of the sand. A little more medium, work that in. So the shore itself is going to be straight. You're not going to see that curve, especially this far away. If you look at that picture, you don't see a curve where the waves are coming in. Okay. All right, so see how that's transparent? Now I can come up here and we're going to side load some white. So I'm just working that into one corner of my flat brush. And we're going to come back here. I'm going to do that first line of waves. So we're going to come chisel edge with the white to the left, and then you can tip it forward slightly or push actually push would be better because then it'll keep the width and you're just getting little bumps. See that you can turn it this way and come from the left and see that, that way it looks like you're looking on and it's kind of falling left and right. All right, so that comes all the way over here. And maybe right here in front, it comes down. You can kind of tap that in there. So it's a little bit wider. Okay, maybe out here, there's just a little bit of a roll. Okay, more medium, side load that white. Now we're going to come forward and we're going to have the front of this have some, uh, like where it's hitting the shore, coming up. Okay, so you've got sea foam and then you can pull it back a little bit or up, I should say, so it looks like it's frothing. Chisel edge, just little lifts, okay? Push, push, push. And little lifts. You can even tap that white corner in there if you want. Now those little lifts, don't put them everywhere. Like right here in the front looks good. Might be a little bit more right in there. And push up. So you're flicking up. And then we'll do a little roll here as we're going off the edge. Little bitty flicks. I'm going to put just some little spray marks. It's so far away that you're not going to see all that detail, but you might see just a little bit of spray. Okay. Very short that. All right, now I'm going to clean my brush. And I'm going to grab a 12 flat. All right, get that damp. Lay it on paper towel, and I'm going to load some medium with that. And then I'm going to come inside, stroke a little bit of this teal, and blend that with the turf. Okay, so 
what I want to do with this is if you look at the picture, you can see just a little bit of um, shadow underneath that wave and that helps give it. Now that just, I think it needs just a touch of the oppression. Just to make it slightly darker. There we go. See how that lifts that wave up? All right, so then you can come in here. So on the flat, push that up under there and stand it up. And you can come over here and do another one. That needs definitely a little of that Prussian blue. Not Prussian by itself, it needs to be worked in with the turf. If you don't have turf, you could try bright green. See how that's just given a little bit of lift to those right there. Okay, a little more medium. I'm going to come in here with the turf, side loaded. And in front of these waves, these little lifts here, you can add just a little bit of a shadow that gives it a lift. Okay. All right. Now we'll finish up this sand and then we can work on um, our sky to finish the clouds. So the only thing I wanted to do with this sand is let's come to our um, with some burnt umber in our three-quarter flat. So our sand color is right here. That's the um, linen. I don't need much of this burnt umber. But I'm going to load my three-quarter flat with linen. And then I'm going to come and side stroke some of this burnt umber. And I need, I think I need a little bit of white because that burnt umber is really strong. I'm working that in with most of the linen because I want it to come across about two thirds of my brush. Okay. So what I want to do now is out in front of this, let's turn this sideways. Out in front of this um, where the sand gets wet, let's get a little more medium on there. Right, where the sand is wet, it gets a little darker. And so I'm just going to kind of not slip slap it on here, but I'm just kind of laying it in there and leaving a little bit of movement, which I don't do very often. I usually blend things out, but in this case, Kind of working that into the sand. So can you see what that's doing? It's kind of darkening that there. Now I'm going to get some white. And what's left of this linen. I probably needed just a little bit, but I think I can make this work. No, I do need a little bit more. There we go. A little bit more linen. And now I'm taking the corner and we're going to create some footsteps back here. Okay. So what I'm doing is I've got that burnt umber in the brush, little tiny bit of it. And I'm slip slapping the corner here and kind of working that out coming into my sand. So you're taking the corner going slip, slap, slip, slap, flipping the brush, working that in. Grab some more linen. My canvas is rocking. I think it's sprung a little bit. All right, and so I want to kind of work those two together. 
I don't want those footsteps or footmarks and churned up sand that heavy dark. Let's take just a little bit of white with that linen and take that out to our middle sand. Oops. <laughs> I don't like the way that's bouncing. Okay. And don't leave this rough edge down here, right? So bring some of that sand in there, sand color with the linen. Right, and off the edge of the canvas here so it's part of the whole thing. So if you hang it without putting a, a frame on it, it'll still look nice, okay? All right, now coming into this, let's get just a little more white. And if we add just a few little white dabs here, so you've got light and dark from where the feet walk and push and turn up the sand. And then it, as the waves wash in, it gets a little smoother out here. Right, and then you go into your darker sand that's wet. All right, now wipe off that brush and just get a little bit of white on the corner. And I want to come in and tap in here. Just a real quick and easy fun little beachscape. You're still seeing the shadows underneath, but you've got a little bit of that foam coming in on top of the sand. Okay, so that's our basic um, you know, simple water, maybe sputter a little bit of white. What's left on my brush. Coming forward, get a little more medium. So this is linen white, whatever's left on my brush. Okay. So you can kind of create those um, patterns with the sea foam on top of the water as it's coming forward. And that can be fun. And it fades very quickly. All right, so that's our water. Now, let's take a look at these clouds to finish these out. I'm going to come and get my, this is a half inch um, mop. And I don't want any liquid on this at all. What I want to do is just tap into some strong white here on one corner. So I'm pushing this corner down and letting white just get on. I can actually do it right here, I think, so you can see it a little better. So you're just getting white on that one edge. So when I pounce it, it's going to create a nice little fluffy round. See that? So I'm focusing on just picking up that white. So let's come up here to the top of this cloud right here and right where that dark starts to have a hard line. I'm going to come and tap in some white. All right, and we're going to come. You can even give it a little swish if you want to have more round edges and then pull it back so it softens into that background, okay, into that darker shading area. If you look at the picture, there's spots where it comes back in like this. Right, and then it's dark underneath, and then you have this part that comes in and around. So I just keep getting white on that corner tip of this brush. So there's uh, it starts getting brighter white. So I'm still on the pushing on the corner like this, and this is getting pushed around. Okay. 
So I'm making swirls or taps. Let's finish this side. I'm going to pull with little wispy strokes here back into, now I do want to, let's just get a little tiny bit of medium in here. I think that might help because it's feeling a little sticky. Picked up a little too much white there. So I'll just very carefully come in here. So now we're going to come through this area here. What I'm focusing on is coming around the hard edges from my shadow areas that are at the top. Bottom I want straight. This middle in here has got some light and dark values, but there shouldn't be any hard edges. But we're going to address some of that in just a minute. I want to get the light colors in here first. All right, so now we're going to come up here, bring this over, back in. And then sweep it into that shadowed area. <coughs> careful of is trying not to make this all the same shape or line so it goes out a little bit down and it's up here strong white right there and then another layer here they kind of meet in the back and come around And this is mostly all dark, kind of like that. And then up here, we've got a little bit of a shadow. Pull it back. Let's get a little more of that medium in there. And I'm gonna tap into just a little of that dove gray on the back corner and get the white on the front corner. Okay. So I want to let those come together a little better. Stronger white. Now you might want to put heavy white right in there just to get that to show a little better and then right in here. So just tap it heavy. And then right through here. And get that mean, uh, dove gray on the back with that little bit of white. Okay. All right, now I wanna wipe off and I wanna load with the dove gray so I'm tapping that into my brush and then I'm going to get a little bit of white with the dove gray, All right? So it's just a slightly darker value. We're going to come right through here and tap that in. And then I'm sweeping into that darker value at the bottom.
Okay, so then over here we're going to do similar little, little fluffs. You don't see much. And then you're sweeping back down. Remember we went at that upward angle. Now we're going to pull this down. So we're really starting to get some character with these clouds now. All right, let me clean this brush off. And for the parts that, let's see, um, let's get a little bit of medium and just a, whoop, a tiny bit of Prussian. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to, let's turn this around. I'm going to come up against these edges, right? Right through here with that color going up against those edges. Come around here. All right. And you don't want this to be hard and you want it to kind of fade off into the sun or into the sky, excuse me. But this is gonna help. This guy needed to be just a little bit darker. Maybe I should have added a little bit of that Prussian into the sky color that I used to begin with, but this will work. There we go. All right, so now if I turn this back around, now you're seeing those cloud formations much better. Okay. You can kind of sweep those in and around those edges. What you don't want to see is a hard line out here in the sky. So you want to soften that back out to that sky mist color. Okay. But now those are showing up a lot better. So now you can, you always have to come back in with some heavy white at the end to emphasize some parts that kind of faded once you originally put the color on there. A little more white here, like right through this part here, strong, so heavy white right there. See that? And you're just kind of tapping that in right through here. Now, one part I'm not real happy about is this transition right through here. So. Let's sweep this down. We're going to do a little internal modification here. So I'm going to grab a little of this dove gray. And flatten that out just a little bit. And then we'll come in with this white. And that comes right through here. So heavy white, you just tap that in there. There we go. Okay. All right. Last thing I want to do is let's get what if there's some medium left. Oh, I need a little medium. So I will clean that brush off. I'm going to get some medium on here and I want a little bit of, no, not that. I want the dove gray, excuse me, medium and dove gray. All right. So I'm going to wash over this blue and sweep that back up just slightly. A little more of that gray.
because that blue should be a shadow. It should not be a hard blue. There we go. All right, now we can do a little bit of tapping over here. Grab a little bit of white. Heavy tap the white in there. This comes around and then back out. And this comes up. There we go. All right, so I'm thinking these are looking pretty close to where I wanted them to. I really enjoy painting clouds and I always try to find new ways to create that look of them with different brushes and I think that works pretty well. So just little sweeps in there is all. There we go. All right, I'm just going to do a few little wispies out here. Do a little one up here. A little coming through here. And then underneath, Let's get this kind of blue color. What you can do is if you want it to look like it's maybe raining just a little bit out there on the chisel edge, I've got this um, Prussian blue. Let's get a little medium with that white on my brush and you can sweep down. Oops, that's a little heavy. But sometimes it does look that way. I think that's too much. Let me just take some of that off. Don't pull that past the water's edge, though. It's just kind of streaky and dark, like it's dropping some precipitation out there. Okay. Now I'm going to take, this is a rake brush also known as a feather brush. I'm going to get that damp. What I want is more like a, let's say a sap green. There we go. And all right, we'll load water. and sap green and then I can get just a little bit of this um, linen okay all right in my original picture there were some grasses and so what's nice is this brush has kind of wispy hairs on it and you can do multiple grasses at once with a little bit of pressure Oops, that got a little thick. All right, chisel edge it this way to get thin ones, and this way to get multis. Let's get a little more of that linen, and we'll do, whoops, maybe some white. There we go. Pull some lighter ones in the front. All right, just for a little interest back here. All right, down here. Okay, 
and grab a little bit of burnt umber. So, there we go. And it's good to have the grasses going in all different directions. So, keep that in mind. And when you're coming off the bottom, you want to make sure you get the edges too. So chisel edge straight gives you skinny little grasses singularly and chisel edge flat will give you multiples. And then maybe on this side, just to balance it out, you might have one or two. And let's get a little bit of that dove gray and we might pull a few no, it needs to be white to show up. Little bits of sea oats. We did those last week too. A little bit of brown. Okay, and maybe you have a hint of one right there. And A smaller one right there. Well, I know I'm picking up that gray, but it's not coming off my brush. There we go. Okay. Well, I hope you learned a lot about clouds and how to create another simple um, landscape, uh, sea, ocean landscape, and come back next time when we'll be doing a lighthouse scene. So I hope you're enjoying paint abilities with me, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.